What's up guys, it's Hadite 7 rct bringing you another video and today uh, I got for you guys another unfiltered. Uh, this time around I'm going to get into the nit nitty and gritty stuff of operating systems on PC, yeah. Like where did that come from? I know you guys are expecting probably a gaming video, which I will be bringing you shortly, but I needed to make a stop here. Um, more for uh, appealing to my uh, PC side and uh, the side that I've been struggling in the past few weeks, if not months, uh, trying to deal with uh, repairs on the beast and some issues going on now. To preface this whole thing, I need to mention up front that now the beast is, uh, you can call it fully operational, beast being my main PC to do stuff for you guys and among other stuff. Uh, I have been an avid Windows 7, a let's call it follower or fan. When the Windows 10 uh, platform came around, I was immediately, uh, let's say, paranoid to a point. I did not want to do anything with the system because it's kind of similar to the gaming world in where usually the first iteration of games when they come out um, mostly on the PC side they're you know full of bugs and issues and, and stuff that people have to deal with and they have to be very patient because they have to go through a whole bunch of situations troubleshooting and stuff until the patches arrive well operating systems are not are not any different in that regard I would say it's even more so in this case that being said um, after most of my friends and, and, and people uh, made the change to Windows 10, I still remained on Windows 7. It felt very comfortable, it was very second nature. I felt like I, which that's the way it should be, I felt in control. Um, cue in all these uh, news around the web about how uh, this one kind of takes away most of the privacy settings or most of the privacy stuff and it takes away the control of the user i was like no i didn't i do not want to have anything to do with this at all i'll wait until something better or at least uh let's call it maybe a service pack or something like they did with uh, windows 7 and some other versions of their previous uh, os's and that's basically what i did however it was fun it was good i was doing i felt in control i felt very good i was missing on some stuff that now i'm beginning to get into contact with but the point remains that it got to a point where my windows 7 not being you know that they're not um updating as much because now this is a past os and now they have to focus on their current one my pc got to the point where it was starting to have too many hardware issues, um, maybe some malware, some uh, viruses, and um, some fragmentation issues. You can throw a whole bunch of those issues into that. But me being, you know, resistant to um, making the upgrade, I had to go through all of that until it came to a point where it messed up uh, my settings for the graphics cards. At a point, I thought that the graphics card, they, they got physically damaged, which in the end, through some experimentation of my own and some troubleshooting, I found out that that was not the case. At least out of the two cards, one is fully operational, which is what I'm using for you guys right now. And I have to say, I'm very pleasantly surprised to the benefits of doing the upgrade. Um, but the video is not really about that talking about windows 10 as a platform i maybe maybe i'll go into that if you guys want me to in another video just drop a comment down below if you want something like that something that i that i can do for you guys as a gamer uh and i'll do a full dive into the current my current version right now is 1803 the april's creator version i believe it is and it's fully updated i do not want to get into the october one but i digress the video is not about this it's about digital distribution platforms when we 
as gamers, we usually um, have many ways of, of getting our games to us, but uh, specific, uh, specifically, we are very used to uh, seeing platforms like Steam and uh, to a lesser extent uh, Uplay and some other uh, platforms like Origin, of course. All of them have different issues and stuff that you have to deal with. Uh, some offer some benefits to the to the user me I have never been kin to the to wanting to use any of these services except Steam Steam is the only one and it took a lot of years for Steam to become very user friendly very uh, full fat featured you know it took a lot of time it took many years to get to the point where they are right now and other platform holders are trying to catch up they're catching up at a very fast pace, but they are catching up nonetheless. And that's basically what I want to have for you guys here is show you, since I'm doing this, of course, I'm going to be doing this from the desktop, which I'm going to have this desktop view for you guys here. Uh, sorry for the inclusion of the OBS software because I don't have a second screen, so I have to do everything from uh, one screen or one monitor for the time being. That being said, we go in here. As I mentioned, I'm uh, using the 1803 version of Windows 10. And as you can see, everything shows up here the way it's supposed to. Uh, some other games, of course, that I'm going to be covering for you guys in the next few weeks or months is going to be uh, probably in the Backlog series. I'm going to be covering a little bit of gears a little bit of forza even though i have here the demo i plan on getting the the full game later on forza horizon 4 also might be thrown there into the mix and uh yeah why don't we check let's start with the standard one steam which is the one which is more uh, common for most of you gamers out there i've been using steam for years and it's it's pretty awesome you have everything from the list of games that you have available to play of course there's always a the gray area or the area where most of the gamers like me the old school gamers are a little hesitant and it's the fact that these are digital games these are licenses that you're basically acquiring you're not acquiring a physical game so there's always a fear of oh what's going to happen if the servers go down if the company goes out of business what's going to happen to my collection of game and that is a very very valid thing to think because you're putting money into this and you don't want to see it go down the drain out of the platform holders i consider steam i feel very comfortable with steam because steam gives you the flexibility of course of having not only uh, consolidated everything that you have every single game that you purchase is really really readily available but it also gives you uh, the chance to be able to dive in go in check your files if you're a tinkerer um, you know deal with uh, modifications and stuff like that if that's not your cup of tea you don't need to go in and do these things of course but if you're like me who likes to have that control to be able to customize stuff to your liking steam allows for a lot i mean it's still in a controlled environment but at least the control that it has is not strangling you to the point where you're not able to do what you want um, recently i've seen some updates um, some of them very 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 cool um, you have, of course, you have the overlays, you have uh, in-game first um, frames per second counter and stuff like that. And then you have uh, controls, skins. There's so much to do here. Even controller, when you go into controller settings, you even have stuff to configure. Not only the Xbox One controller, but now they're even allowing for switch controller uh, configuration and stuff like that which to me that is awesome because it's another option option that is available for you guys if you wish so 
they have uh, chat. No, I'm not gonna restart Steam now. They have a uh, chat. They have so many things connected, achievements, and many things that make the experience of using the platform very cool. They're not perfect, not by a long stretch. They are not perfect. They still have some issues and stuff. But one of the primary benefits, at least for me, especially when you're dealing with hardware, is not only can they fail on the server side, but you can also have failures, which is very realistic on the hardware side on your side as well. Um, recently, I got a few months back, I got a, uh, a three terabyte disk drive, which I wanted to have, you know, consolidate all my games into one drive, a newer drive, of course. And this, I did a migration of my C drive, which is basically where uh, is the default place where Steam is going to install your games. And basically, I moved it to the new drive and just moved some settings and some folders. And basically, Steam, what it does is it verifies that drive. And once it verifies, you're up and running. You, you, you can have that. You know, as long as they verify that the game is legit, that you have your licenses and stuff like that, you're already operational which to me that was that was awesome it was painless i did not have to wait tons of hours and i was already gaming in no time flat so that is super super good and it gives me a layer of confidence that you know my games are going to be protected now getting out of steam one that um let's say i haven't been having so much issues but it's just it an overall I don't know uh, lack of confidence perhaps in the whole thing is the origin platform which I don't have here let me search real quick let's open origin up I have to change to this one here while I set this up in case I have to put any passwords or stuff like that Origin is, I don't know, Origin ever since is uh, Inception has been, you can call it the bane of my existence and many others because everything from the user interface and basically you accessing your games and stuff like that. In the very first year or two, maybe three, it was tons and tons of issues, uh, incredibly long waiting times to not only download but to um, update the app itself or the, the you know the program itself. Uh, this coupled with, of course, uh, the the news spreading around that Origin and EA in general had these privacy violating practices back in the day where they would basically scan your computer and get some information they're not entitled to have all of that has changed of course but it leaves kind of a bad taste i have to say on the flip side because not everything is bad with origin that same operation that i mentioned um, before about migrating my games i had as you can see here there are not too many games you know not nearly as much as the ones I have on Steam, but I have a couple of big games, you know, big file sizes because Battlefield 1 and, and Battlefront, they're big uh, titles. I did the same thing. I migrated my account or I, my, my, at least where I had my, the files of the games, I migrated to the new drive and I did the same thing, but lo and behold, you know, EA has to be EA. As I started to try and run the games from the new disc, I was expecting something kind of like Steam where they would verify that the game is legit and they just, you know, run it from there. No need of downloading. Guys, I had to download basically a ghost image of the almost the full game of each and every one of the games. I haven't even, I don't have the whole thing. I have to download, see, see this right here? I have to download the games that I already had Mass Effect which you know 
Crisis. All of these games that I've had for years, now all of a sudden, because, you know, they're distrustful and they're saying, you know, and I get it, you know, piracy and stuff like that, but Steam has, basically, they just make a couple of checks to verify that that folder that you have, that that game that you have is legit, why go through the, the whole trouble of having to download the damn thing again? But yeah, that's what I had to do. Um, basically, I had to download estimating in time. I had to to wait like, um, and I have a pretty good internet speed. I had to wait for maybe half of the full game to download in a ghost form. I got into the folders and I saw that for each file that was inside the folder, uh, ghost a ghost version of that same file was being downloaded. In the end, when the operation finishes, the ghost one takes place of the one that's inside the folder, and then the other one disappears. You know, it's the same thing. It's just to make you go through this process, which to me is unnecessary. If the game you check on the first run and it says that it's valid, why make the user go through all of that? But again, on the flip side, because not all is bad, I have to say that at least in terms of the user interface, the options and stuff like that, it has grown quite a lot better than it was in the beginning. In the beginning, it was utter mess. It was The user interface was ugly as hell. It looked like a hacked uh, Ubuntu, you know, from way back in the day, user interface slow to update slow to do anything at all and now it looks you know it looks really good you have your achievements and your stuff there of course they're gonna have uh, first and foremost um, the options to buy stuff because again this is EA after all so yeah buy 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 all of that is gonna be there but I can't f um, fault them at least in execution this time around because you also have stuff like deals, and lo and behold, they even have games under $10, which is pretty good. So, the only thing that I have a complaint about, at least at this point, is that right now, as you can see, my display is 4K, right? And basically, all of the apps that I have, you saw Steam right now. Everything looks really good, really sharp, and the fonts and everything blows up to better match the the screen, right? Not in the case of Origin. Origin kind of stays the same. Maybe it's lacking an update. Maybe there's a option that I haven't triggered yet, but for some reason, this stays the way that it is. It's a little hard to navigate, but, you know, that's a minor quibble. Um, at least it looks good and it works fine so this is another option that you have here uh, on the Microsoft side of things of course you have especially with Windows 10 you have the Microsoft Store which I gotta say right off the bat it looks good of course it has to look good because this is supposed to be optimized for the operating system um, it could look much, much better because, to be completely honest, somebody who's been playing the Switch from the get-go, from launch, the eShop looks better than this visually. And let me explain. You have here, let's say we go into games. Go into here, okay, you have nice Forza, uh, standard edition, first, um, first party game right there for you to get that's fine and good but then you start scrolling down and you see a mixture of mobile games or mobile type games right in there with you know the triple a titles or the console titles it's not that i mind so much but the thing is that it makes everything a little bit too convoluted and a little too cramped i mean if you're gonna have see this right here you have microsoft casual games that's where all the games should be the ones that are you know the mobile type kind of apps the games that are supposed to be apps because I don't consider Forza Horizon 4 or you know or Forza uh, Motorsport 7 or Gears of War 4 as an app 
I'm sorry, I just can't see it. It's a game. It's a full flesh game. Um, aside from that, Quibble, everything runs the way it's supposed to. Um, purchasing through this is not really nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, putting your information is pretty good. The only problem, and this is a big one, guys, the only problem I have with the Microsoft Store for the time being is the clamp that they have with the, their files. Like that example that I gave you guys about uh, moving or migrating my games from one drive to the other. In this case, oh guys, you cannot, you cannot even touch this. I mean, you cannot even go and check your files on the games or stuff like that. I'm gonna go here real quick to give you an example. Now I have here is the drive that I was talking about. I just go into Steam Apps, Common, and here I see all of my the games that I have, the physical, if you can call it that, but the files and folders of each set games that you have in your collection, and I can just open up, see what's in there, you know, and everything is fine. Let's take one that's installed, like Far Cry 5. See, you have everything here. All the data, everything, everything. The launchers, everything. And you can easily access that. And let me tell you, you're so, you're, to me, in my opinion, I don't know if I'm wrong, but you should have access to that. Now, let's do the same thing with Microsoft stuff. Now, I have only a few demos and a game. I did not want to put it next to my regular collection, so what I did was, this is the folder right here called Windows Apps, and in there is where it's supposed to be the games. Now, it says empty folder, you try to access, and right off the bat, you don't have permission to access this folder, and it starts going to this loop. If you hit continue, you have been denied permission to access this folder. Now, I get it, Microsoft. You're trying to be a little bit uh, secure. You want to avoid piracy and all this, but dude, I'm paying for the games. You know, I, I am at least entitled to see that my files are there. If I can um, customize something, I should be able to. Everybody else does it. Why don't you? Now, I'm going to search around and see if there's a way of going around that but I don't find that cool at all it just makes me feel uh, it, it makes everything feel more shady for the time being it's working and it doesn't bother me I will update you guys in another video how that works out uh, and of course the benefit let's talk about the benefits because I talked quite a bit about you know how crappy it is on, on on that side on the security side and the access side the user side but it also has some benefits and it's you have of course the access to Xbox Live as long as you sign in you have everything where it should be you go into Xbox Live and you can play the games through there very nice uh, user interface and you have plenty of stuff for you to check out uh, create friends and stuff like that of that nature check achievements and everything this is very um, steam like in that it offers a lot of uh, benefits and little bells and whistles for you to you know have fun and check out you can also add games from of course from other platforms like Steam of course you can add into that but I don't I don't feel like mixing those worlds for yet um, just yet I'm gonna keep testing and keep checking to see if there's any nitpicks or further nitpicks for me to deal with before I kinda join everything in especially with Microsoft having that little thing about not giving you access to your own games I'm a little on the fence about that, but Xbox Live works fantastic, which I'm going to be making a video for you guys later on. 
uh, force a demo. I don't know if I'm going to do a demo because it's not really worth it. I should probably, when I get the full game, the full uh, Force of 7, I'll do that for you. And Gears of War, which is running pretty awesome right now. Um, all that's left right now would be Ubisoft's own platform. Now, of course, I'm not covering Bethesda, who's recently now a new player into this whole digital platform thing. But Ubisoft with Uplay, Uplay, <laughs> to me, it's been kind of like love-hate also, not to the same degree as Origin, but it was a little slow to take off. It did have a lot of compatibility issues, especially when they were doing cross-platform stuff. Um, for example, I had my Uplay, which had to be part of the Wii U stuff, kind of conflicted with the stuff that I had on the PC side, but as of right now, they have they have grown into a very uh, beautiful, on the UI side, as you can see here, everything scales the way it's supposed to, not like I showed you Origin. You have your games here, you can download or delete and manage files, you can go into the folders as well and verify your your games. Um, you're updated in the stuff. They have a lot of community things going on and activities that you can also see and be notified through the game. I've had tons of fun with Far Cry 5 and uh, the whole missions that they have, uh, limited time missions. So it's for now, it's very, very fun. It's very easy to go and get, you know, buy, purchase games and have them here. So at least operationally and visually it's a very very cool platform if you don't feel like going into the other ones for some reason I would say that um, Steam and, and Uplay right now they're they're pretty close uh, Uplay does not have the breadth of uh, options that Steam has not by a long shot but compared to the other third parties like uh, EA and um, and now but that's uh, they have a pretty good advantage in terms of what they offer within their platform the security is pretty tight you have of course you have your own achievements and stuff and most of these achievements I have to say they even unlocked goodies for the game which is something that is very nice and I haven't seen it done in other uh, digital platforms Actually, you know, you get achievements in some of the games, and you can use those points to actually buy in-game stuff. So I can say that even though Ubisoft is getting a little closer to the whole, you know, getting involved, but not completely into the whole loot boxes thing, they have been able to avoid a lot of the hate that EA has gotten with their games and loot boxes. Yes, of course, it is something that is... Uh, more money is a business practice but they have somehow found a way to include in-game purchases without having to strangle you in the process which is absolutely cool and that's basically it guys that's that's what i wanted to talk to you guys about today i hope that you found the visual um the video useful i hope that if you want me to cover some more or at least on the windows 10 side any questions and stuff like that please drop a comment down below. Try to answer it as quick as possible. And stay tuned, because uh, coming up next, I'm going to be doing the Far Cry add-ons and some other good stuff for you guys. I wish you a great weekend. Take care. Please like and subscribe. See you guys later. Peace.